All right, this is going to be one of the most important videos I ever make. And there's a reason many conservatives are afraid to touch this one. As many of you know, these tunnels were discovered at the world headquarters of Chabad Lubavitch in Manhattan. Now, Chabad is no ordinary sect of Judaism. It is the most powerful and influential sect of Judaism that exists on the world stage. And what I'm going to outline here is I believe that good people within Judaism brought to light these tunnels and they turned against Chabad. We would have never known about these tunnels if it wasn't for this good group of Jays. All right, now this is gonna be a little bit graphic. Uh, you've been warned. I, I, I do not like doing content like this, but it needs to be shown here. So these unexplored tunnels have been proven to lead south in the exact direction of a J ritual bathhouse at 394 Kingston Avenue, 900 feet away from Chabad HQ, and linked to a recent Child R case from two months ago. Here is the court document. This took place at Oholi Torah, which is an educational institution that seeks to offer boys of Chabad Lubavitch families ages 3 to 18 a strong and traditional Chassidic education. It immerses its students in Talmudic and Chassidic studies. And this document talks about how the plaintiff was taken to a mikvah, which is a ritual bathhouse, which is open all night, and there's no security there whatsoever. And one of the teachers at this Chabad school named Cheritanov uh, rubbed... I'm not even going to go into it. You can read that if you want. And this has been a constant issue in Brooklyn, like this CBS New York article from 2012 that says, Calls continue for Brooklyn DA to take action on sex abuse cases in Hasidic community. First sentence is, Prosecuting childhood sex abuse cases in the Hasidic community has been a long-standing problem for Brooklyn District Attorney Charles Hines. Cases often fall apart because of witness intimidation. Yeah, they're a very tight-knit community that does not like to rat on each other. But like I said, there's been some good people in the community, it seems, that have stepped forward. And let's just take a look inside of what it looks like in one of these Chabad synagogues in Brooklyn. Here's here's a, apparently a hidden camera that took a video of these kids back in 2011. This is them saluting their invisible rabbi who they worship. And there's a lot of rabbis who disavow Chabad. They do not consider Chabad to be actual Judaism. A good example here would be Eleazar Shosh. And from what I've read about this guy, he seems like an honorable rabbi. And then it says, Shosh was undoubtedly the greatest antagonist of Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. And that's the leader of Shabbat. At least that's, that's the dude that those kids were saluting to, who had already passed away and they were saluting to his invisible spirit. And Shosh, he was the only Lithuanian rabbi to come out in force against the Chabad movement and its leader. He accused Chabad of false messianism by claiming Schneerson had created a cult of crypto-messianism, which means... As in, like, in public, he would pretend, like, oh, no, I'm not the Messiah, but secretly he would tell his people, like, yeah, I am the Messiah. I just got to say that into the public. But from what I've read, Shash is not at all alone. A lot of Jewish people really don't like Chabad because, again, they are, like, basically a heretic form of Judaism, but oddly extremely powerful and influential. For example, we actually have a holiday in America in honor of this rabbi Schneerson of Chabad. It's called Education Day. And every single president on Education Day, they are obligated to make a proclamation in honor of Rabbi Schneerson. Every single one. From Reagan to Biden. You can pause this and read all the honorable mentions they've made to him. But more disturbingly, it seems like Epstein and his inner circle was also connected to Chabad in this guy. Like, for example, Naomi Campbell. She pays tribute to inspirational Lubavitcher Rebbe. And if you guys recall my Epstein research, where I talked about how Virginia Gouffre, the most vocal victim of Epstein, said that Campbell was especially rude to her. And Naomi Campbell was in the inner circle of Ghislaine Maxwell and Epstein. And the sect of Chabad is from Russia, and all four of Jeffrey Epstein's grandparents, Jay grandparents, were Russian immigrants. And I've got a hunch they were probably connected to Chabad. They come from that same region. And also Jared Kushner, he's Chabad as well. At least he gives them a lot of money and he hangs out with their rabbis. Now perhaps some of you have seen this Vice article as well, titled The Child R Assembly Line, where Rabbi Nuchem Rosenberg went on a trip to Jerusalem where he was fixing 
mik- mikvahs, which are the bathhouses over there. And he walked into another rabbi, aring a little boy. So he tells the authorities. And this rabbi, he goes back to this neighborhood in Brooklyn, and he is attacked by other Hasidic Jays. It says here that he was a victim of a bleach attack in William- Williamsburg, Brooklyn. So that just gives you an idea of how difficult it is to dissent in this community. Even if you're doing the right thing, like telling the authorities about this disgusting act. And even if you do it all the way in Israel, and then you come back to Brooklyn, these Hasidics will still attack that person. At least some of them. I can leave a link in the description. I don't want to go over what he saw, because he was graphic. And for those who don't know, this is Rabbi Schneerson. I thought this guy was always just a meme of a random dude. This is the esteemed, literally the messiah of Chabad, and this is the individual that you saw those kids saluting to. And they think that he's still, even though he died, they think that he's still actually alive, like a supernatural entity. And Rabbi Schneerson was an infamous J supremacist who has said verbatim, the entire creation of a non-J is only for the sake of the Js. And in America, we have a holiday in honor of him, where all the presidents every single year go up and they give their obligatory speech in honor of this guy. Can we at least agree that this is weird? And I don't want these people influencing the nation that I live in. And I'm sure the vast majority of you, you share the same sentiment as me when it comes to your other respected nations as well. So this is what happened when NYPD came to seal up the tunnels. And you would think that there would be an investigation first, but that's not what happened. Instead, they sealed up the tunnels with cement in less than 24 hours, and the cement is not used to support existing buildings. You need to build footings and support columns, which are then reinforced with cement. So it just seems like a rushed cover-up. And now we're never going to know what was down there. Does that sound normal to anyone? And then, of course, there's the soiled stain on the child-sized mattress. When I sweat at night, it's a different color than that. Like... If you're sweating, you know, it's usually a sort of a more yellow stain. I've seen dried blood on a mattress before, and it looks exactly like that. Also, let's look at some Google Map photos of this facility. It seems as though they have a creepy windowless van with their Rabbi Schneerson on it, right next to where the sewer grate is that they crawl out of. And here's a map of the tunnel system from above showing how it goes from the Chabad World Headquarters across the street, or under the street, I should say, and then to this mikvah bathhouse. And according to what I read on AP, that's where they were tunneling to. They wanted to access this bathhouse. And you can see from the air, according to these pictures, it looks like they actually caused some damage on the street, which is circled in red right here. And this aerial photo matches up to what I just showed you in the Google Maps image. So they were causing damage across the city to the point where the government had to investigate. Here's another picture of a Chabad Lubavitch compound. I'm not sure if this is the one in Manhattan, but it looks like they have tight security. And when you look into the amount of child sex abuse cases that Hasidic Jays in Brooklyn have done, it's staggering. It's just, I keep finding case after case after case. Like in 2014 in Brooklyn, Baruch Lubavitz was supposed to serve 32 years got it dropped to two years, and only served a few months. And of course, he was represented by Alan Dershowitz. Then there was Herschel Pecker, one of the most prominent members of the Chabad movement. He admitted in 1991 to doing things that shouldn't be done to a five-year-old girl. And there was also the case in 2009 when a number of rabbis were arrested over human organ trafficking. It was a total of 44 elected officials and Jewish rabbis in New Jersey. And these tunnels were just a few blocks away from Jeffrey Epstein's former Manhattan mansion. And they were discovered just days after that massive Epstein dump. And it's weird because Epstein also sent a cement truck to his island three weeks before he was exposed. Was he hiding tunnels too? Here's the cement truck he bought. Had it shipped to Little St. James. And if I didn't make my point earlier, I want to make it clear how influential Chabad is on the world stage. For example... The second Mille won in Argentina, the first thing he did was travel to Brooklyn to visit the Chabad World Headquarters. Instead of Brazil, usually they have a tradition in Argentina after the new president wins, they go to Brazil. He broke that tradition and went to the Chabad World Headquarters. Because his rabbi is Chabad. And the official rabbi of Russia and Vladimir Putin is also Chabad. His name is Burel Lazar. 
And of course, Trump is close with Chabad too because he was doing real estate in Manhattan, in Brooklyn. So of course, he had to be under the good graces of Chabad in order to even conduct his business. And this is what this Politico magazine article means when it says the happy-go-lucky Jewish group that connects Trump and Putin, where Trump's real estate world meets a top religious ally of the Kremlin. But wherever Chabad goes, there, it's, there seems to be controversy. Like, there's been protests in Russia where people have said, like, hey, we're not anti-Semitic, we're not against the Jays, but we're against Chabad. Like this Times of Israel article, Russian protesters demand ban on Chabad movement. Demonstrators opposing land allocation for community hold signs referencing 16th century expulsion of Jays. On Saturday, the protesters showed up with signs reading Chabad out and liberate us Russians from Chabad. So if you Google top rabbi of Chabad, Rabbi Abraham Shemtov shows up. Then if we look at his Wikipedia page, it says, Often called the Rebbe's ambassador to D.C., Shemtov developed connections in Washington. He regularly leads Chabad Lubavitch delegations to the White House and played a pivotal role in the relationship formed between Schneerson and U.S. presidents, starting from Nixon all the way to Obama. He was appointed by President Reagan as one of the five members of the National Advisory Council on Adult Education. The more I learn about Reagan, the more I realize he destroyed this country, especially with, with his Immigration Act. And it makes me wonder, like, did this guy influence Reagan to do the Immigration Act? This is just speculation. I don't know. Because Chabad has a major focus on something called tikkun olam, which means repairing the world. This phrase with Kabbalistic roots has come to connote social justice. And Chabad, again, they're ultra-Orthodox, so they're super into the Kabbalah and the Talmud. And tikkun olam is the Hebrew word for world repair. And it's come to connote social action and the pursuit of social justice. So even though Chabad, sure, they, they seem right-wing, but they actually do push for a lot of this social justice, open immigration that we see in Western civilization. It's why I think Russia is also bringing in a whole bunch of foreigners into their nation now, too. Probably, and this is just me guessing, I don't know, I'm not an insider. But I could see Burrell Lazar being someone who's advocating for that. And also, here's something I found on Chabad.org when I was looking into this religion. And this is from the Mishnah Torah, which is their most holy book. And it says, Any Gentile who does not accept the seven universal laws commanded to Noah and his descendants should be slain. These directives, however, can be interpreted to apply only in a time of war or in a time when the Jays have control over the Gentiles. And some people say like, oh, you know, no one actually pays attention to that. I'm not talking about, again, I'm not talking about regular Jays. I'm talking about Chabad. These people are hardcore religious. They take the interpretations of their holy book literally. They are ultra-Orthodox. I'm talking about a very specific group here. And they have the ear, it seems, of many of the leaders of the most powerful nations on earth. And unfortunately, I've noticed that several Jays were upset that these tunnels were even revealed at all. Like, this is from the Crown Heights website, where Yosef Stam was lamenting, I read your article and I can't believe this is modern-day Messira. Regardless of how bad the people who did this are, publicizing it is going to cause harm to 770, make a Chalul Hashem, and give our enemies munition against us. You are equivalent to modern-day Hamas. So I just want to be clear, I don't make this video because I'm an enemy of Judah. I am not an enemy of their tribe. I'm doing this to help our country heal and to reward those who expose these illegal tunnels. Because take, for example, Andrew Tate. He was criticized before for... People were accusing him of shilling for Israel. But then, all of a sudden on Twitter, he's pushing back. Specifically on Tim Pool, for example. Tim Pool says, If the secret J tunnel was built so Jays could worship after New York illegally and unconstitutionally locked down places of worship, then I say based AF. And Tate says, Very unfortunately for many children, that is not why it was built. Which is something he wouldn't historically say. But since he's been open to criticize these things, he's been getting a lot of love on Twitter, and he's noticing that, like, yeah, thanks for showing me support for talking about these things. So that's why we need to support other Jays who expose Chabad. But it's also going to take everyone who resonates with this message to be brave enough to speak this type of truth, to participate in this type of dissent so we can normalize it, and then the average person will come along with us. Once we've established in the culture that it's okay to call these things out. In fact, it's the right thing to do. So thank you for listening. God bless everyone. Take care.